my mom might be on Zoom. I, I don't know. She said she might tune in today. I didn't tell her. I didn't know this was happening. Uh, yeah, so I'm Mark. Uh, been coming here for about a year. And then uh, I dropped out of school and been going to monasteries. And now I'm probably going back to school. Uh, but yeah, I was just out of Ayagiri for a few months. And um, actually, the whole subject of giving is, is what really stuck out to me. Um, I think uh, the, the implicit drive for a lot of my practice was uh, was grasping and, and trying to get somewhere or become something, get something out of it. You know, everything was, what am I going to get out of this? And that's just sort of how I approached my whole life. But uh, being at a Bayagiri, uh, you know, you can do that for a month and then it doesn't really work out because it's a pretty shallow way to live. And, you're, and that's just totally exposed in an environment like that. Um, and yeah, that, that's, I, I found a lot of, um, I have found refuge really in, in giving from that point when the sort of uh, selfish tendencies that I, I built everything on were crumbling away. Um, and yeah, monasteries are a really great environment to really dive into that. So, I mean, uh, I don't want to be another guy telling you all to go to monasteries, but you should go to monasteries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it's, um, I'm glad I didn't put it off. I thought about it. Uh, I've got about a year left of school, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just finish up school and then do it, but uh, yeah, I, I think this is the important thing, really. And if you quit your job or take some time off or whatever you have to do to make the space for it, um, I think that's very worthwhile. You're not going to regret it, and I think you'll be glad you did it sooner. And you'll probably wish that you did it sooner, too, actually. It just sets everything up. Uh, the The things you learn and the skills you pick up will carry forward and just brighten everything else that's going to come after that. So it's a good investment. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, so, well, on, on uh, Monday night, I'm taking a red eye to Virginia to stay at Forest Dama for a few weeks and then see some family out there in Virginia, and uh, then I'll be back here in June, and that'll be the end of my travels for the time being. I plan to stick around a little while. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So I, I like what Ajahn Kovalo said about the like not self in action. Is that it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not about you. I think that's that's been my big takeaway for the last few months. I'm Mike. Uh, I just got back recently from a week down at Abayagiri, and I, it was not what I was expecting. Uh, I was expecting a lot more solitude and contemplation, but it really is a busy day, and you know, working in the kitchen and um, beautiful trails there, and um, interacting with the monks. It was really, it was really. An incredible experience, and um, uh, Ajahn Pasano, kind of the the 
Luang Poor Emeritus, I guess you would call it, or Luang Pu. Uh, he, um, he had brought his mother, Rhoda, down, and there's a room named after Rhoda, the Rhoda Room, and so she was there. She was 99 years old, and uh, that was really cool. And uh, I didn't know I was going to be there for Thai New Year, which is apparently a big deal because it's like the hot time of year in Thailand. And um, in Thailand, they throw water on each other and they pour, apparently pour freezing cold water over the monks' heads all day long, which has to be <laughs> kind of an experience. <laughs> but uh, we just washed... Uh, we just washed along Pasno's hands and then the other monk's hands, and then um, they, someone suggested that he take a, a long Pupas and take a broom like and dip it in the consecrated water and like do this to everybody, so that was kind of cool. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's not hard. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something with... Okay, so anyway, <laughs> thank you. Um, so that was kind of neat, and um, they brought incredible food. So, and it's all supposed to be about the nourishment, but it was pretty tasty. And uh, so it was, I came away from there really jazzed up, but spiritually. But it's easy to, <laughs> it, it's easy to be that way at a monastery. But it's, I noticed that when I got back on the road and drivers were frustrating me, going through the mountain passes of Northern California, like that irritation and the self started to creep back in. And I was like, oh. Um, so really the practice is about doing this in our daily lives. And uh, that is the challenge for me. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, you know, I got a little booklet from Ajahn Pasano, and it's kind of a little collection of his Dhamma talks. And he was saying, like, compare the amount of time we spend meditating in the, in the day to interacting with others in community. And the time spent interacting with others is far greater. So the sila is, I've been trying to stress the sila, because then concentration flows out of that, and then wisdom flows out of that. And I never really thought about that before. I, I was very much of the Western mindset. I want the not self. I want the death talk. You know, I want the lofty stuff. And yet, really, it's all grounded upon how we treat each other. So that's what I got out of it. Thank you. Long Pasno's mother, Rhoda, is legendary. Um, she, uh, the first time she went to Na Wat Pananachat, the monastery Long Pasno became abbot of, he was eating, and as a kid, he was really picky about separating his food, and so as the, all the monks were eating, she like sort of shuffled over and looked in his bowl, and everything was touching. She said, that's amazing. <laughs> And then the other really good story is um, when Long Pasno had founded a Bayagiri after being a monk for 30, 30 years or so, um, Rhoda came down and visited and she had a stay and everyone treated her really beautifully and at the end she kind of stood up and said, I have an announcement to make and everyone was expecting her to say like, you know, I just see what a beautiful thing this is and thank you so much for taking care of my son. And she said, you monks have to stop overfilling the dryer you're gonna, you're gonna break the dryer. <laughs> and then she left, but uh, <laughs> Rhoda is so, so wonderful, and uh, she is very supportive of Longpore, but it gives you, uh, I'm glad you got to see her, and yeah, just to support, um, Birkin is opening up in, uh, that's the monastery in BC, about just north of us, with Ajahn Sona. They open mid-May, uh, and they've been closed for quite a few years with COVID, so That'll be one resource. And then there's Servasti Abbey, a Tibetan abbey on the east side of Washington. You can go there. And then there's a Bayagiri, which is in n two hours north of San Francisco. And you just email. Um, it's all for free. And just 
we encourage it. So thank you for those who shared today. Um, do people have anything they'd like to talk about or questions, et cetera? Steve. Please. Uh, I think there is, yes, mindful yeah. mic runner. Yeah, th thank you for what you shared today. I had two thoughts came out of that, because I really appreciate the, w um, the embracing of what you were offering. And one was, I mean, it, you know, when you first arrived, well, a year and a half, two years ago, I think you and I did these field trips, and, and, and I realized that, how do I say, any thought I had that I had something special because of being with you right at the beginning is like completely an illusion. Not that I had that thought, but I've watched as the community builds and that any person who arrives is special, equally special, all the same. So I've just really seen that evolving, uh, you know, and it's just really, it's really wonderful. And the second thing is, um, I, I was in a commune in the 70s that self-destructed. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And you know, power corrupts. You know, and I've been, you know, watched. I've watched the power of spiritual leaders corrupt multiple, multiple times over the decades, and I feel as a way, and you have this way of handing it off. You know, it is a way in which this community is being shared, like the sort of the power and the empowerment of people is being shared in a way that I don't have any. And I, have a, I do have a high threshold of, uh, how do I say, my antenna go up about spiritual leaders taking power. I have a, I've got a hot button there. And I don't, that does not happen. This is like the opposite. I just feel like there's handing off, handing off, handing off, or empowerment, empowerment, and all kinds of graceful ways that fit people's inclinations. And, you know, who knows about their karma and what they come in with anyway. But so just really appreciating that. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'll try to live up to that as well, and I think this community can, you know, it really, there's some magical ethic around uh, this whole thing that we're doing where, uh, you know, I've heard some people say when they're talking about how much Donna you should give an organization, they say give so you don't feel remorse. And it's so close to being right, but for us it's actually, there's a small difference, because that implies that there's a sunk cost that you owe something. And with us it's like, there's really not, like, I think they calculated how much it takes to feed a monk, and it's about as much as like a large dog. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, and really we're here, like there's no sunk cost, like it's just welcome. And then our ethic is give the Buddha, how he said it, give where you feel inspired. And if people are inspired to give to this project, then that's great, but there's never the slightest obligation. And it's that and this level of surrender and community, which I feel like are, are really unique aspects of and, and very beautiful, so yeah, I'm, and, and you are special, Steve, too. <laughs> so, okay. We have uh, maybe time for one, one more. Oh, Dennis, I didn't ask you about it by a gear, I didn't see you. Do you, do you wanna say something about it? Yeah, come on up. Dennis was also there for three months. We keep, people keep leaving here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was there to buy gear for three months, and then I was out. Oh, I was at Bergen for for six months, and uh, other places too. And he was, yeah, I, I took a a year off. I quit my job, and it was kind of an indefinite sort of uh, process. But but I have to be back now, and yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll reiterate what what people say about being in a monastery i mean the 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 social element is like a really big part of the training it's it's uh under under emphasized and yeah i mean it's it's uh it felt very natural for me to be there uh and um you know there's a, there's the the community work and the sense of purpose and in, in doing all the communal activities and and um, you, the the monks there they're very refined and 
the way they interact with people, so I learned a lot from that. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, like coming back here, there's, there's a lot of um, like holistic benefits in, uh, in all parts of my life that it's not just like, you know, my meditation practice is a little bit better, like I can sit down and, and sit and it's, it's more tolerable, sure, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not so horrible. <laughs> mostly because because I think I just don't have the the doubt anymore it's like because I, I always used to I, I just I just worry a lot like oh I'm not meditating right maybe maybe I don't know how to do it maybe I'm doing it wrong and, and it's, well I just I just don't have that as much because I, I trust I trust the Buddha more I trust the Dhamma um, it's kind of um, yeah, so I can just sit down and be like, "Oh, it's all right, <laughs> it's okay." I just, I just sit here. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I had, uh, I'm, I'm sleeping like way better than, than uh, before I left. I, I had uh, sleep problems for like seven years or so, and and I've been, I meditated like, I started meditating shortly after those started like a year after that started i was like okay i gotta figure it out and it took it took a while it took like yeah seven years of of meditating but uh <laughs> yeah but um i mean going to the monastery i got a lot of more uh of that external support like yeah i had that idea too of like oh well i'll just i'll just i gotta i gotta sit more i gotta you know, really buckle down and sit more, and but but then I left to the monastery, and a lot of things happened that just kind of weren't part of me so much. It's just a lot of um, external support being at a monastery, especially a training monastery. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, the computer stuff is is really uh, phones and computers. It's just, it's it's really easy to get away from that at the monastery and, and difficult. In, in just like day to day life, if you have a phone in your pocket all the time, it's it's always a temptation. But yeah, it was it was really helpful to get away from that. And yeah, I mean, I I'm sleeping just fine. I'm uh, interacting with with my I'm getting along with my parents and, and stuff. It's like it's like oh we're friends, you know. It's like we're we're not bickering and like the chickens are happy even. <laughs> like yeah, it's like oh. The, you know, it, it it keeps building. I think yeah, there's there's more faith there, and, and so I can sit. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else you want me to talk about. <laughs> So that was great. Um, despite demographic appearances, there is uh, plenty of lodgings for women down at Abayagiri. And we have had Allison go and other people go and going. So please, uh, all are welcome there. And hopefully, you know, once again, we will have some female monastics here in the coming months to give some talks and teachings and even stay during the summer. But uh, I find it's really meaningful to get to just rejoice in, in people being able to get along with their parents and uh, get enough sleep and the chickens are happy, so <laughs> it's great. <laughs>